All right. Hey, come on in. Welcome, uh, California Association. Really excited about today's event. Um, we almost filled up our queue for our webinar limit, so I'm really excited. Um, everyone that is hopping in, you guys are all in for an incredible treat. Every time I speak with Michael, I learn something new about AI. Um, so if you want to go to somebody for information about artificial intelligence and how to use it ethically, how to use it in a way that benefits your clients and benefits your staff members, um, Michael's going to be the guy. So people are still pouring in here. Um, we're going to have a few polls that I'll launch here in just a minute. But um, before we do that, Michael, thank you for joining us today. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Let everyone know who you are, where you're from, how you got into Absolutely. this. Yeah, so um, I am a, a realtor just like you guys, which I think is really, really important because uh, that's what I do every day. I, I work on a team with uh, with two other amazing business partners, uh, Jordan Mays and Trisha Bongers, and then we've got a, another agent with us and a client care manager. Um, and I've been doing this, this is my 30th year in the industry, so I've been doing it a long time. And I've seen all the changes. If anyone's been in this business for for any length of time, I, I was an agent before the internet came along. So I've seen all the changes and I've become very accustomed to seeing change as an opportunity, seeing disruption as an opportunity, opposed to it being an obstacle um, to see the opportunities. And so uh, be it video, uh, be it anything that comes along, digital si signatures, uh, paperless, uh, real estate business, uh, we, we try to see the opportunity to not only uh, Im improve our business, but to create a better customer experience. And uh, so I got uh, down the AI rabbit hole probably mid-December when it was launched, uh, uh, November 30th, really it came out. Uh, and it is an absolute co apps, um, it is absolutely an integral part of our real estate business day in and day out for an entire team. There's probably not an hour that goes by for every single one of the pe people on the team during working hours where we're not dipping into AI. Um, and what it allows us to do is to streamline the other events so that we can be more human. And I think that's really one of the things that, that, that I want you guys to take away is if you can improve your efficiency so well on the things that AI can help you do, then you can spend more time at the coffee shop with a first time home buyer building a relationship with them. And so the one thing before we jump into it is just real quickly to set the stage, MIT came out with a paper that talked about the impact of AI in, in business for professionals. Now this was chat, uh, uh, chat GPT 3.5, we're now at four, but it came out in the beginning of March, this MIT paper, and it found that professionals using uh, chat GPT um, reduced their time on task by 80%. So for every hour, someone that doesn't use ChatGPT gets one hour, I get five. And it also Insane. found that that quality of output increased by 40%. So for every hour you get one hour, I get five hours, and my five hours are 40% better than your one hour. And, and so that's where the opportunity is. It's to use it in the other places in our business that allows us to elevate our customer service, uh, to build those relationships, which really ties back into Realvolve and all that other stuff too as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. To introduce myself and then I'll we'll pass it on to you, Mark, and then we'll get right into sort of the top five ways, everybody. So today is going to be extremely actionable. All right. Um, you're going to get prompts. You're going to get tips. You're going to get pros and cons. There's going to be a few tool recommendations in here as well. But um, Mark and I are from Realvolve. We're a real estate CRM company. We've been partnered with the California Association of Realtors for years now. And so you've probably seen us around here and they're doing events like this. What makes me so excited about today's session is that, you know, we we recently launched a beta integration with ChatGPT. We're building it out, you know, we're wanting to improve it. And so this topic is really exciting for us because we sit in this workflow aspect of real estate agents business. Um, so Mark, uh, if you could introduce yourself as well, and, and then we'll get right into the, to the content here. Absolutely. So for those that don't know me, my name is Mark Stepp. I am the Chief Innovation Officer here at Realvolve. 
And for the last 30 plus years, 33 this year, um, I've really just been helping real estate agents with technology, helping them understand how to automate their business, create a sustainable business, how to do the things that they do on a daily basis, but in an automated way. And since ChatGPT came on, actually, I was looking at it in early 2022, and it just wasn't where it needed to be come the end of November. It's just like it exploded and exploded because of how they made a few changes. And just a few changes really just made everything happen. And with the most recent changes we're going to talk about, it is just taking it that many steps forward again. So I'm excited to share some good things with you. Awesome. We just launched a poll there. So everyone go ahead and just curious where everyone's at in terms of your usage with AI. Right now I'm seeing, um, you know, almost half of you are, haven't used it as all at all. Um, at least 80% of you either just never use it or occasionally use AI. So our goal today is at the end of this session, you're going to, you're going to know exactly what you need to know to go and start using this because of what you guys, you know, Michael Thorne just mentioned, he uses it every single day. I mean, his staff, his team, they use it every single day. So really excited about that. We're going to close out that poll um, just so that everyone can go ahead and see that. And then let's go ahead and get right wow. into. I, um, I, I want to ask at the end of the session, <laughs> Sam, how many of those nevers um, will, 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 are more than likely now to use it at a much higher level than they did at the beginning of the uh, of the session because Absolutely. they now know the opportunity. I'd be interested in the end of it to see where they go. Absolutely, yeah. We'll definitely do another poll here at the end, um, just so that you guys can help us with feedback as well. I want to make sure these these sessions are helpful. Um, so let, yeah, let's get into it. No more wasting time. We do have uh, we have an hour here. Um, Michael, do you have any or Mark? Do you guys have hard cutoffs or anything like that? Just so I know to. <laughs> flip things along and push you guys through this or I, I, I would stay and answer questions for four hours. I, I, okay. I can't get enough of chatting with, hanging out with you and you, you and Mark are great, but uh, I, I love helping agents. <laughs> awesome. Cool guys. So we will have a Q and a at the end. I'm not going to push us through that super fast uh, just because I want to make sure we get all your questions answered. If you have questions as we go, put them in the Q and a, if you have thoughts, put them in the chat. Um, we have, over 300 of you here right now. And so we may not get to everyone's questions, but we will absolutely do our best. Um, so getting into the very beginning, we're gonna talk about chat GPT. I'm gonna hand this off to our expert, Michael, <laughs> but we're gonna start with how to just start getting into it. How do you, if, as you know, about 80% of you rarely or have never used AI, how do you get into it? So really excited to see where this goes. Michael, I'll let you uh, kind of turn on your little screen share thing. I'll, I'll stop sharing this slide and um, we'll go from there. Yeah, so so for me, it's, it's chat GPT doesn't have a purpose. Uh, Realvolve has a purpose. Uh, it helps you connect and stay, uh, maintain relationships. For, we use it uh, with, with the clients in between the homes that they buy and sell. That's the purpose of it. DocuSign has a purpose. It is to help uh, people get uh, documents signed uh, securely, conveniently, uh, in a digital way. Um, BombBomb has a purpose. What you have to realize about ChatGPT and, and these large language models in general is they don't have a purpose. They're not built to accomplish a task. That is your responsibility as the user to instruct that brain to, to, to do a task for you. And so I think I had a realtor reach out to me and I encourage all you guys to, um, I know only a handful of you will hunt me down on Facebook messenger and, and ask questions afterwards. I'd be more than happy, happy to chat with you. I'm, I'll learn as much from you as you'll ever learn from me. Um, someone said, well, how do I get into using it on a regular basis? How do I create a habit of using it? And so I gave him a challenge and he, he just gave, got back to me and he says, I've completely changed the way I use it. If you're on a task, any task during the day, 
And you could say to yourself, if I could sit across the table from an expert in whatever task I'm trying to achieve, would, would it make me more efficient? Would it improve the quality of my output? So that could be creating some online content. Would it be better if you had sitting right next to you uh, a, a world-class uh, social media marketing manager next to you that you could help write your content or bounce ideas off of you? Would, would, would it be valuable to sit across from an SEO expert or a business coach or a, a, a world-class copywriter in the real estate industry? So when you have a task that you want to achieve, the first thing you have to do is tell that brain what it is or who that person is, what their expertise are. And so we start out a lot of our prompts simply saying, and, and, and I'll show my screen, but I've got all my prompts built in uh, to... Uh, um, Evernote here. And you can see that no matter where I go, the first part of the prompt is always, and I and I think I can zoom this in a little bit more for you guys, but act as a skilled real estate um, copywriter. Um, if I go here, act as, uh, act as a real estate SEO content strategist, act as. All the time these prompts are telling the person, uh, act as a digital uh, real estate digital marketer. And so I'm giving the brain what it is, and then I can tell it its task and it can really help me. The, 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 the more context and content that you give it, the more you seed it, the better the response will be. And the skill will be in, in, in prompting. And Mark can talk about that too as well. But whether it's chat GPT, whether it's Bing, whether it's Bard, the skill moving forward for the next number of years will be your ability to prompt, to communicate to it, to improve your result back. And what happens is at the beginning, and I get it, you just write in simple terms. And because you write simple terms, it will give you simple answers. And, and so that's the skill moving forward is your ability to prompt properly. Yeah, I think everything that it comes down to, it really molds down to asking the right questions. And yeah. if you have an assistant, let's just say you go into your office, you have an assistant, you say, I want this. Well, if you don't give them enough detail that this, whatever it is, is either going to be good or it's going to be bad. And the more detail it is, the better it's going to be. And chat GPT is the exact same thing. You really you just, you learn and we call it prompt engineering, but it's a matter of learning how to ask the right questions and give it the right information that you need in order to get the results that you really want. And, so and, and that's the key, the key to that too is more, sorry, Sam, but what people have to understand, it, it's a mind shift from, from that Google mindset that we have, where we ask it one question and we get one answer. That is not the right way to approach chat GPT or these large language models. It's the fifth or sixth result that really starts to paint a picture of what the value is. And, and we've got so many things we've got to get through, but one of the simple things you can do, go to is generate 25 long tail keywords uh, for you know mo moving to Langley, British Columbia. It will generate five long tail keywords. Then you say, give me three blog post ideas from number 14. Then it gives you three blog post ideas. Then write me an outline for number two out of those three. Then you can say, great. Can you write me a meta description? Could you turn that into a YouTube video? Could you could you write me the, the best title? So it's an ongoing conversation where you're constantly refining and improving the conversation where Google is one question in. If you don't get the answer you want, you, you, you try again. That's not the point of this. The point is to continually to have that conversation back and forth. And ChatGPT remembers context. The, the example I use when I'm helping agents all the time when I'm doing these webinars is I just have a random person come on and I say, what would you say if I said to you a case of beer? And, and they go, uh, and they, I always get this random answer. But ChatGPT goes like this, and this is what I say to the person, okay, how much is a gallon of gas? And they give me an answer. And then I say, and now a dozen eggs, and they give me an answer. And then I say, a case of beer, and they say 1995 or whatever the price of a case of beer in the States is. It's still the same words, a case of beer, but because there's prior context to the previous two questions, the large language model, ChatGPT and all these understand what you're talking about. And that's where that magic is, the context, the seeding of it. And that's what we'll get to when Realvolve does really well. It's aware of the surrounding context of your conversation. Um, and and uh, when you're putting out emails and whatnot, which is amazing.
yeah so let's let's um let's go ahead and take a look at that let's get into these prompts if we can um starting starting easy and then we can get more complex the next two points we have around how agents should be using this are, are in chat gpt so can you share michael like where some of these prompts like what have been the most helpful for you and and how should some yeah of yeah so i mean i i can i've got so many let me pop open here um sam and i, I i'll just go grab something um in here uh here's here's a here's one that i'm working on right now um where we're writing a a, a series of all these um all the great parks and the trails that are in in our area so you can see here it says act like a skilled uh real estate copywriter who's being commissioned to write the best possible parks and trails in langley bc then i tell it about its voices which is so important you have to have chat gpt speak in your voice um and then i give the outline of writing the article and obviously these are very high you know um um it, you know detailed but at the end of the prompt, I have this word, do you understand, which is so important because when you're talking to an actual copywriter, you're sitting across the table having coffee with them and, you, and, and you're explaining what I need from you, you will get the head nodding back from them. But obviously in a format like this, you don't get the head nodding back. And so uh, I know the screen is coming in blurry. It's because it's, I'll, I'll try to zoom it in, but you don't need to know about, um, uh, um, you don't need to know the actual details to understand how it works, but I, I will zoom it in. So, okay, uh, let me go back. And so I'll run this prompt and I basically told it what it is and what I want it to achieve. And it will write back, um, it will write back, yeah, absolutely, I understand. I'm waiting your instructions and what I can do. And so the second part of the prompt is this article structure that I want it to write the article in. And obviously I just, uh, grab this uh, prompt and this maybe this may be a little bit over the top. Um, but then I'll write in and say, here's the structure I want you, the format that I want you to write it in. And these can be real simple. And I said, hey, at the end, just tell me that you received it. Do you understand what I'm telling you? And then I can simply say, I want you to write the following chapters for this article um, based on any, sorry, any one particular keyword. So I have Aldergrove Park right here at the bottom, but I could simply just say, I want you to write that about Williams Park and Langley. Uh, I don't even need, need to say w Williams Park. It knows that I'm talking about Langley. And then I, I, I press return, and this is how quickly it's gonna write three chapters for um, this, this big, huge uh, database of all the amazing parks that are going through there. And it says, oh. And uh, in the heart of Langley, Williams Park is a sensory delight. It, uh, towering Douglas firs and western red cedars are around it. It has the Salmon River slices right through the middle of the park, which is absolutely accurate. Um, it, as seasons change, the park's pa color palette changes. It's going to talk about the activities and the events. This is a super detailed prompt or response because I gave it a really detailed prompt. And, and, and so we can go completely to the opposite side of it and and and... I'll show you what I mean by that. And I can just go stop generation and I can go write me an uh, uh, blog post about Williams Park. Now it might have previous context because I already gave it to it, um, <laughs> but it, it, it will just read it and, and it, it will write it in its own format. It will, it will say how I can't choose the format. I want it to write a certain way. I want it to highlight certain things. Um, and, and so these are the type of outputs. Now I'm using chat GPT four for this. Um, and I could go on chat GPT 3.5, which is sort of the free one. Um, but it, um, the, 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 the key of it is Sam is, is the prompting, mm -hmm. the, the better the prompt, um, the better the output. And, and I, I'm more than welcome to share um, all my prompts with you guys. If you, any of you guys want to reach out to me personally, you've got to earn the right to, to, for me to share your prompts, some of them with you. <laughs> but, but one of the key prompts is getting it to write in your voice, which is so right. important because what, what's going to happen? There's, in my opinion, there's two losers and one winner in the real estate industry when it comes to this technology. The losers are the people that don't use it at all. Because for every hour you work, I'm working five, and my five are 40% better than your one. I, you know, I will win. 
The other people that will lose are the people that use it, but don't use it properly. Use it to cut corners, use it to, 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 to automate, to become more distant, more disconnected from the consumer. And so one of the key things is when you are putting out po uh, outputs, whether it's emails inside your CRM, whether it's blog posts, that if it doesn't sound like you, if it doesn't, it do doesn't have your values and, and your emotions, when they finally do sit down across the table from you, which, which is where our industry always ends up at the kitchen table, if the person they're sitting next across from is not the person they thought they were going to meet, they'll go, oh, I can't trust their expertise. Something's wrong here. Something's off. And that will hurt you if you put out all this energy to, to get to the kitchen table, and now you've created a disconnect. But if you have ChatGPT writing your voice, uh, uh, yeah. uh, you know, and, and create content the way you would speak, and we can talk about that a little bit more, then you're reinforcing, you are reassuring that you are the expert, you are you are building off of the expertise you've already seeded that consumer with, which is the most important thing. And so when you ChatGPT and these large learning learning models have inherent biases. They're not completely accurate. You have to get, and to talk about the brainstorming part, Sam, is get ChatGPT, ChatGPT is amazing to get you from zero to 80. Give me, give me an outline of social media marketing strategy that I can use to engage past clients that I haven't, you know, spent a lot of time with or have haven't built those relationships for the last five years. Give me these ideas. So it gets you from zero to 80. Your responsibility is then to go to from 80 to 95% with your with you into it. Go in there, right. edit it, fine-tune it, make sure it's your voice. And then go back into Chat GPT and say, okay. Here's a 95% on the way project. Convince me that it can be better. Where did I miss? Where's the opportunity to make this better? And ChatGPT will 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 rip whatever you do apart and make it better. And I don't know what it is, Sam and Mark, but because it's a robot, when it insults my writing, I don't take it personally <laughs> the same way I would if it was like like Jorda or Trish on my team. The, the robot just says, hey man, you missed this idea. You, 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 you mentioned this too many times. You were redundant here fix these things and it makes it better so sometimes i'll i'll correct it i'll be like no you did this wrong please do this and uh it's like i apologize and i'm like no it's up <laughs> it's so it's this weird thing because it's a machine but then it's like sorry about that and i'm like it's okay it's like wait i'm talking to a code right now um yeah. so first recommendation obviously for everyone is get in there just start using it like just ask it stuff right if it yeah. doesn't and this is where we get to more complex prompts and I'd like to touch on that is getting it into your voice. How do you make yep. it sound like a human, right? But for yep. now, if you haven't used chat GPT, get in there and just play with it, right? It's going to give you funky answers. But as you keep doing that, and the path that Michael and Mark have gone down is you, you start building out these complex prompts, it gives you complex responses, right? So garbage in, garbage out. Every chat's a and, baby. And yeah, and and Mark and Mark will attest to this too as well, I'm sure. If it doesn't give you the response that you want, and it's able to give you the response, if, if the technology has the capability to give the response, it's you. You didn't ask it the right question. And quite often when I get something back from ChatGPT, in, in, which isn't what I was looking for, simply ask it, hey, that's not what I was looking for. Can you please ask me six questions? that I can answer that will help you understand what I want and it will write you questions. And one of the things I've been doing is after I giving it a prompt, I give it a prompt and I said, oh, by the way, if there's anything that isn't clear, ask me before you execute this and I'll say, okay, great. Do, do you want this, 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 and this? It'll just ask you real questions and then it'll execute it. So if it's not getting the response that you want, ask it why. Ask it what you did wrong to communicate to it because it will do what you want. It will do what you want. It will and I you. think for for especially for real estate agents that are brand new into the into the arena, you can have a large improvement in what you do oh. just by using this above the agents that are not, but just by using it. Take for instance, you know, maybe you're not the best at you know doing a, a, a an interview or something with a with a potential buyer or seller. You can say, act as a nervous real estate seller. Um, yeah. Ask me interview questions about my service as an agent. Ask me one question at a time and wait for a response. Once the response is given, analyze the response for clarity, for uh, connectivity, for correctness, and give recommendations on additional information that could be helpful to make it clear, you know, be clearer. 
and yeah. and you can give it this prompt and then it'll come back and it'll start asking you questions as if it was a real estate home seller a home buyer yeah. whatever and it goes through and asks the question and if you don't understand the question say hey how should i answer this and it'll come back up so you can do you know many agents go and they spend an hour a day doing their um their phone call all the different things that they do to yep. practice, you know, the scripts yep. and stuff like that. Yep. This should be another time frame, time block on your calendar just to go in and educate yourself on what you can do and Mark. how you can eat much faster. Yeah. And then, and, and, and let's we'll talk to me because a lot of people say, how can we actually use this for real estate? Like, look at me brainstorming. And I just, I just, this is just a thought I come off the top of my head. I will share anything with my competitors. I, I come from an absolute place of plenty. In my 30 years career, the one thing I've never shared ever is our listing presentation. Our listing presentation is so good. It is so rock solid. It's so amazing because it, 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 it can foresee, like the minority report, all the objections that might come up and I can address them before it happens. But let's pop into chat GPT real quick and just say, I am, and this is going to be a real simple prompt because I've never done this. I am a brand new Realtor, please write a detailed, because if I said just outline, it would just write me an outline, a detailed outline for a listing, listing present, uh, presentation that addresses all the things a seller would want to know before listing with me. You could even go in there and say, what's the most important considerations when creating yeah. real estate listing? Yeah, yeah exactly. I differentiate myself from other agents in this yeah. area. I mean, just details so, of that. Exactly. And then what you could do is you could say, what are the 13 most common questions a seller asks? Can you, were those addressed in this outline? Can you add them to that, that, that detail? Can, can you do that for you? So, um, I mean, it's just, I mean, this, this took, there was never something like this for me when I was starting off in the industry. It took us years to develop our listening treasure. What it did was I, every single time we got an objection from a seller, we would then add it to the listing presentation, which means over time it got better because we learned the objections. Um, mm -hmm. But you can ask it to do anything. Now, once again, this platform wasn't designed to help realtors, brand new realtors create amazing listing presentations. That wasn't one that it was for. Mm -hmm. And so now you could say, okay, great. Uh, I want a slide for each one of these points to, to, to digital. Can you write an example of the copy and then explain, you can even say in using your words, explain the visuals and the layout of each one of these slides. And it would say on the left-hand side, I suggest you have a picture of a young couple sitting on the front step of a house and we can get into mid, mid journey, how you can create all that. So you could, you could actually ask it what you wanted to do. And so now let's talk about, let's talk about doing this. So I can see, this is this ongoing conversation. I can say expand on number six, which is pricing strategy. I don't have to give it, it knows what I'm talking about. Expand mm -hmm. on number six. And it will go down and it will say, okay, 6.1, define what a CMA is. 6.2, 6, it's just gonna go through. And so now you can get more and more detailed. You can you can say, look, at, I, you know, these are the things that's gonna set me apart. Um, 6.2 is discussing your pricing strategy. I mean, the information is astounding because it is pulling from such a huge resource it's it, it's mm -hmm. scraping every article it's ever read about the importance of what to market a home and it it's still going and it will go and this is just one of those six points i mean it's Crazy. for brainstorming it's i mean i've never even tried this before and of course it worked because it always works it always works and marisol just asked can it teach me how to do a proper cma um <laughs> I'm sure it can. And sure it just, can, so, right? and just, it, it just asks, so you know, you know, what are some common things that would be good to have in a CMA? I mean, yeah. you can go in there and, and if you've got a list, this is what's really crazy. If you've got a list of properties 
copy the properties, paste it into the text area and say, reformat this into a table with this information. And it'll recreate a table that you can then put into a, a CMA. You know, if you want and, and to as well for for perhaps. my American for my American realtors, we don't have fair housing in Canada. We also don't have escrow. It's beautiful being a Canadian <laughs> agent. But I mean, one of the low hanging fruits is listing descriptions. It's a super low hanging fruit when it comes to this. But um, uh, you can you the re oh, sorry, someone just said the response is not concise. Uh, I'm I don't know if that's from the prompt just say be more concise um right. but you can say here's a listing description can you make it uh comply with the fair housing rules and it will rewrite it now your obligation your broker owner will tell you just you still got to go back and check it but chat gpt knows what the fair housing rules in the us are and will conform your writing to 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 abide by right. those rules um it's it's it will do anything you want it will do anything you want yeah, Wes, I'm not sure if it can actually do a CMA. Um, it's get, it, well, plugins are here, so it's, it's getting it's, there. Uh, if, get if it's not here, it's seconds away. It, yeah, pretty soon. Um, we have a lot of cool things coming down the pipe for plugins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, Marisol, I mean, you know, as far as um, doing like helping you plan it out and, and what you should be looking for if you seed um, ChatGPT properly, I mean, absolutely. I've never built a CMA with it, but Michael, I mean, have you? Do you have it build out your CMA process or? Here's what, here's what we want to do. We, I mean, I, sure. I, I would, I would farm out a lot of things in my business uh, to my, to my, to our assistant. One of the things I would never farm out would be a listing presentation, mm -hmm. would be a client meeting and probably would be a CMA. There is so much art. If a CMA was 100% science, knock your socks off. I would think mm -hmm. you'd be okay. But there's art to pricing. There is mm -hmm. art to marketing. And I think we cannot throw away our amazing, unique experience and understanding of the local market um, all the time. And once again, there will be people who will press the easy button and those are the people that will lose, um, in my opinion. Uh, but it can definitely get you there. Um, we actually, that reminds me, uh, we did a video CMA masterclass with you, Michael Thorne, maybe like a year, year and a half ago. Um, I think Michael does video CMA better than anybody. So would love, I can send you those resources, uh, Marisol, if you'd like, be curious about using video. Um, do, do, do. Okay. Um, before we go on to, I think we have plugins next. Anything else we need to cover for ChatGPT? Um, yes, yes, another another three weeks of webinar, but we don't have that kind of time. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh, so, um, oh, uh, one thing I, I do want you to share, Michael, is um, what is what tips do you have for having it sound like a human, right? If you want to shortcut the process of you rewriting it, what what sort of prompts yeah. do you put in there to make it sound so, not like AI? So, the, you you are more than welcome to reach out to me afterwards, and I and I'll send you two prompts that I've got. There's two prompts that I have. Number one is to have it analyze some of your text. So if there's a blog post you've written or emails that you've written, I've got a prompt built out. It's a three point prompt and it will then spit out um, a guideline that will then in its own language, describe how you speak, how your sentences are structured, whatnot. So that when you do create um, uh, content, you just say in your prompt and you just, once again, I keep all my prompts, as you guys saw, I keep all my prompts in Evernote. I'm an Evernote junkie and they're always just one click away. Um, so I just have a prompt that says, when you write this, you're going to use this voice, right? The other way you can do it. And the way I actually prefer now is I wrote a prompt that said, ask me 20 questions about my writing style. Your goal is at the end of the 20, section, 20 questions to give me three options of well-known uh, writers that, that write as close to the way that I write, like suggest a name. And my name came back, never heard of him before, a guy named David Allen. And I ran that prompt three or four times and it kept on recommending David Allen. And so yeah. now when I write a prompt, I can just say, write in the voice of author David Allen. Not to write in David Allen's voice, 
but because Dave and Ellen's voice is so close to mine that mm. the AI has so much knowledge of everything that David Ellen has written. He's written bo books and he's written documents and blog posts. They've, they've, they've got enough content from David Ellen to know that I speak like that person. So that's one of the things I just asked ChatGPT to ask me 20 questions about my writing style and then give me three names. And I just ran that prompt two or three times and I got David Allen three, three out of three times with two other names each time. And so that's really, really an easy way to do it. That way you can just say, write this blog post in the voice of David Allen. And by the way, you have to say, and don't self-reference as David Allen because it will say, yeah. it will mention its own voice. So um, <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Yeah. So everyone's asking about these prompts. Um, well, at the end guys, stay to the end because we'll give you a way to reach out to Michael um but we'll make sure yeah we'll make sure we get those to everyone that wants them um let's see here okay so let's in the interest of getting through this quickly guys again we'll send you as much content we have a lot of content we're going to send it to everyone for free um and we're going to do that as, as much as we possibly can here so let's move on to plugins michael this yeah. is your thing i want you to talk yeah. about this what are plugins how are agents using them let's go there Okay, so this is this is the this is the game change of what's happening right now. So we all lived through it. Um, the iPhone came out, I think, in two thousand and seven, and the iPhone was an amazing platform. It, it, it's it was incredible. But what made the iPhone and smartphones in general so much different than the Blackberries of the worlds of the Nokia's at the time was the App Store. And I have an iPhone and my best friend has an iPhone and we'll be sitting in the backyard and his iPhone will buzz and I'll see his home screen. And the real estate of his home screen looks very different than the real estate of my home screen because his phone is being optimized for how he runs his life what's important to him. His Instagram is right at the top because he's on Instagram all the time. He doesn't have real Volve like I do in the bottom little row of homes that are the most important buttons in your life. Um, and, and so it's, it's the plugins that makes the experience personable. And plugins were launched about two weeks ago and it absolutely changes everything when it comes to, to large language models. And what, what Bing and ChatGPT has done is they've created a plugin store and it's, the word store is a little fuzzy because everything's free right now. But any plugin you can use on ChatGPT, you could also use in Bing and it gives you access to unbelievable stuff. So if I pop over to, now, caveat, plugins are only available in chat gpt plus which is chat gpt4 um, it is the paid service of 20 dollars a month it is a no-brainer in your business i obviously i wish i got an affiliate link from them but uh, it's chat it's open ai that will never happen but um let me show you how it works so let me pop over here and when i go to a new chat i can have chat gpt4 now and i can use it just as the default model or i can use uh, browse with Bing, which now has access to the internet because before, before now, ChatGPT only had knowledge up until September of 2021. It's smart, but it doesn't have current information. It can't tell you who won the Super Bowl. It can't tell you, you know, those sort of things. So that's where, where things have changed. Um, but if I go down here to plugins, I can choose plugins and it says no plugins enabled. Right. So here's all the plugins that I have, and you can have three plugins enabled at a time. So I could have uh, Zillow enabled. I can have uh, Wolfram enabled. And I can go down to the plug plugin store. Uh, and here's all the plugins that are available. Hopefully this pops open. It's been so new that it's having a time. But you can see uh, now all plugins. There are now 23 pages. There were 17 pages yesterday. <laughs> There's 23 pages of plugins that all do different things. You can go through here and, and find out what you want. But the way it works is if a plugin is enabled, let me just go and turn on, I'm just going to use WebPilot. You don't have to tell it to use a plugin. If you ask it a question that the activated plugin can help you achieve, it will automatically use that. But once you know it can do things, it's amazing. So this plugin is called WebPilot. Um, it is, I think, from uh, uh, 
Microsoft, it is their co-pilot. But here's an amazing thing. Almost every association, I'll show you how this works. Every association would have stuff like this. So this is a statistics package, stats package from April, 2023. And this was released uh, on uh, May. Let me see if I can zoom in here for you guys. It was released on May 2nd, 2023. And this is the Fraser Valley Real Estate Board. This is my board. And my board is made up of a bunch of different cities. It's made up of Abbotsford. It's made up of Mission. It's made up of White Rock, Langley, where I am. It's made up of, of Delta and so on. Uh, and this overview of, of this information that's, you know, for immediate publication to the public. It speaks about the phrase of our real estate board in general. It gets all those cities together. But what comes in the stats package are all these stats in the form of a PDF, in a PDF, all these stats, right? Um, but what I can do now with access to the internet is I can just grab this URL from the... Um, uh, from from that stat package, and because I have this uh, web pilot uh, activated, I can say using the web pilot plugin, and I don't probably have to say that. It probably would have done it anyway. Hmm. Plugin uh, review the following PDF um, and reply. Only with red. All right. And now I will give it the URL and it will go off and it will pop open the web pilot plugin and it will go off and it will read all those stats inside that PDF. Okay. So then I can say, uh, based it's One thing there, it. just to help them understand that by having that red on there it doesn't then try to summarize the entire PDF. It'll yes. just come back and say, hey, it's been read. It, yeah. It's a yeah. Quick, quick answer. Yeah. Now, I don't know why it's not working. Let me go. Pat, uh, Sometimes you have to reload. They, they oh, there it is. There it is. Uh, huh. Based on this information, give me five, uh, give me five key take aways for buyers, sellers, and homeowners in Langley. See, it is monthly stats package. It's going to start answering the question. I asked it to just reply with red, but it didn't. But let me go stop. So now it's going to, it, it's read it. You can see if I pop down here, you'll see that it's read all that data. All the prices changed everything. It understands that in whatever language Mark probably understands. Um, that was a compliment, Mark, not an insult. Uh, and then so I can say, based on the information, give me five key takeaways for buyers and sellers and homeowners in Langley. This PDF is not about Langley. It has Langley stats, but it's not about Langley. And so now it can go in here and it will say, based on the information, April 23, here are five key takeaways for buyers, sellers, and homeowners in Langley. Uh, housing in the Fraser Valley, including Langley, remains. Uh, so here's here's your increase wow. in forty percent right here. I mean, oh my goodness! You know, th this just blows away. How much time would it take you to read that entire package and then turn around and try to summarize that package that's, when that's a when couple days do of work? Thing, yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, that's that's several days of work. And here's where. I, I talk to a lot of people and they're nervous about this, right? But, you know, with something like this in the, in the hands of people that use it well, you, and, and even through all this AI stuff, I, you know, realtors are not going away because I guarantee you like homeowners are not going to do this. You're still doing the same thing. You're still gathering information. You're still consulting with your clients and making sure you're informing and being a source of information for your clients you're just able to do it a lot more quickly. You're just able you're to do able it to in, build that in relationship two minutes with, instead of three days. That's the number one thing you need to be doing is building relationships exactly. and, and let yeah. the AI build the content that you need. Right. So and here this, we go. It, it, so I can just simply say, okay, great. Now I can prove that. I can say, is that great? Now I say, write an email that I can send to my database based on this information. 
And this will this will get us back to the very end thing, the, the the winners and losers. But dear recipient's name, I hope this message finds you well. I wanted to share. It. Now I could obviously I didn't prompt it in my voice. I would have said write like me, you know, you know, right. don't take yourself too seriously, be humble. But now you've got an email, right? You 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 you've got so an cool. email that 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 writes it out. Um, it's insane. And so now it has internet, and that was that's one of twenty three pages of plugins right now. It's a great mm -hmm. one. Going to the internet is great. I can go to if I watch this. Here's another thing. I watch. I mean, for the people that are blogging. So this is this is uh, our blog. This is actually a blog. You know what? This is a blog that I wrote uh, yesterday or the day before. I will copy that out, and I will go. Um, uh, give me some. Uh, uh, options for external links for this blog post. And then I can just give it, and I didn't even tell it to use the plugin now. I just gave it my blog post and I said, give me, show me, read it. And then tell me where I can be linking out to, to improve my authority. Like who, yeah. what, what, what words were said in that article that I can be using to 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 create some external links or even internal links i can have it go and say read all my blog posts on my whole website and then tell me where i should be linking between these two articles um go to my website and, and tell me where my broken links are like it, it's 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 incredible so it will now when you're using plugins it's slower which is so insane like i'm, I'm annoyed that this is taking so long <laughs> That is five months ago. I was blown away by how amazing it is, how how um, how quickly we get we get. But based on the content, here's some per, uh, potential external links that can be in included. Professional home staging services. So I could link to someone that we recommend, and they could link back to me. Um, professional cleaning services. Uh, professional real estate ser photography services. So this was all about getting your home ready. So I could go back there and say, okay, great. Um, I'm going to link out to my favorite stager or my favorite whatever, and then link back to me. And then you're creating that, 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 that back and forth. So having access to the internet with plugins is insane. It's, I mean, and that's one, once again, of about 250 plugins that didn't exist a month ago. That's insane. <laughs> it is insane. I mean, <laughs> I mean it's it's so much and i know we're throwing so much information at everybody and this is what you're seeing is you know michael having used this for coming on like a year now right so it's going to take a while to get used to using this and also using it consistently in your business every single day um as far as let's review really quickly so chat gpt get in there and use it it's free everybody start using it the plus is what 20 bucks a month 100% yes. worth it, right? We're not affiliated, oh. obviously. Just go go use it, right? Just go use OpenAI, go use ChatGPT. And then um, let's get that. The restrictions on the GPT-4, but it's it's still gives you a little bit better content. Oh, yeah. Know. I mean, I mean, 3.5 is great. 3.5 is great. Um, you know, that's where we start. I, I was blown away by 3. Point, blown away by 3.5. It changed everything we did. And then 4 comes along and absolutely it, the skills the same you can go 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 sign up for bing bing runs four and it's free mm -hmm. you know what i mean like it's not gonna get this, mm -hmm. all the same bells and whistles but i mean it's all around us the, the What's point the is name of that plugin you were just using michael uh I that's called web uh web pilot web pilot that's yeah. the plugin everybody that's to pull information from using chat gpt plus chat gpt4 pulling information directly from those urls um there's Web pilot. There's almost 200 different plugins. A lot of them do <laughs> similar types of things. Um, you know, there's there's PDF reader. There's, I mean, webhook. There's Zillow. I mean, all the different things that you can use right now. Go, we'll just go watch this YouTube up. video. Yeah. Go go yeah, watch man. this YouTube video and write a two paragraph summary of this video. Go yeah. go go watch this 45 minute video and write a two. And that comes back in 30 seconds. Now, it's not watching the video. It's reading the transcript. But the same thing, it summarizes a video for you. We had we had some more questions on um, disclaimer. Do Are there any um, compliance? And I'm not sure if the if realtor boards or, or uh, the Real, National Association of Realtors has any compliance guidelines for this. Do you have to Can tell? I Sam, can if I you just use talk chat to GPT to write a blog post or an email or anything like that, do you have, okay. Um, 
you if it's if it is you cannot copyright something that a machine created for you you can't copyright a mid-journey image you can't copyright a mid-journey blog but if you substantially improve it you certainly can now would you hire a copywriter to write a listing description for one of your homes and then without reviewing it post it on mls if the answer is yes, then that's your problem to begin with. Of course you wouldn't. Of course you would read it, right? And 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 this is none, no different. You would never hire ChatGPT as a professional copywriter to write your listing description and then not review it. The onus is on you to review the content and put it out there to put your own spin on it to to make sure it's accurate and relevant. And that's what I'm talking about, the winners and losers out there. There are so many things that you'll catch that are wrong that when your client finds out that you're advertising their four-bedroom, three-bath home as a three-bedroom, two-bath because it screwed up, don't go and point the finger at ChatGPT. Point the finger at yourself for not doing your job. This is not a get-out-of-jail-free card. It's an easy button, but you still have to be an absolute professional about it. So yep. the same way if you were to hire a blogger, or a content writer, you would review it before you posted it. It's no different. Um, you don't have to disclaim uh, uh, that it's being written because you you wouldn't you wouldn't disclose that it, you had a copywriter write it. You would hire them. They would come into it. You would review it. You'd make two or three changes and you'd post it. So um, yep. that's my opinion on it. And and no 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 court of law, no real estate court of law, no broker ownership is going to going to get you off the hook because AI did it for you. You will be as responsible for misinformation as you would if you hired a horrible, um, you know, a, 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 a person to do stuff and it didn't conform with your ethics and your legalities. Um, yeah. So just to sort of wrap that up, everybody, again, you know, go start using chat GPT, use it for writing emails, use it for organizing and brainstorming, just start seeding it with information. Um, we are, yes, plugins are paid version only. We were going to go over for, text for now. image. For, yeah. for, for, for now. now. Right. For now. Yeah. Um, text to image. Um, this is a big thing. Maybe this is an entirely different webinar that we do. Yeah, <laughs> maybe it's a already webinar. Webinar. On an hour, and I know many of you uh, Frank, thanks for that feedback. You know, many of you very new to this. We want to make sure this is helpful that you can go take the, the very next step in terms of using AI to save time, put out better content and to put you and Michael, this is from you. Actually, I remember you saying technology is supposed to get behind us to push us closer yeah. to our relationships with our clients. Good technology yeah. helps you focus more on relationships. And I want to get into can, I mean, are, are, are we going to pass by Midjourney? Because I'll, I'll show you just real quick. Do like you want? Well, okay, seconds. let's touch on it. Just it's really exciting. Exciting. No, cool I'll, just, I'll, just show you, right. I'll just show you my screen. <laughs> so just an idea of Midjourney. So these are blog posts. These are all Midjourney. Um, these are these are not real images. These are all, I told it what to write. This article is called Dangers of Overpricing Your Home. And I said, put a warning sign built into a house, right? So if I click on this blog post, there's a bigger image of it. But I could never get an image of a danger sign connected, built into a home uh, that that way. I mean, I can be whatever I want. This was one for preparing your home for staging. Um, this isn't a real photograph. This is obviously a little dollhouse. Um, you know, you guys call it HOA fees in Canada. We call it strata fees. But I was like, you know, those awesome little... Um, uh, models that you see at new construction. I'm like, create a little model of, this is not a real photograph. I typed words into a prompt and it created this image for me. And it's exactly what I told it to create for me. And so um, it's a one of a kind. It's exactly what I want. Here's, here's an article on downsizing. You know, I just said, Hey, uh, imagine, you know, downsizing. And you've got this guy looking at these little houses and you know, uh, it's mid journey is incredible to create these amazing pieces of visuals that is only improving, by the way, mid journey has gone from being unusable to unbelievable in the last uh, year. Um, it's just one get once again, the impact of, of artificial intelligence on our business. Yeah, yeah, mid journey is insane. Maybe that's a different topic for a different yeah. day again, and you a know, whole nother webinar. 
yeah we'll get the best way to reach michael at the end of this um just so that everyone you know if you have any questions if you want to see more about any specific tools right uh go for it um but i wanted to before we get to q a spend the, uh, the last few minutes so about you know about sort of where we sit you know where does the crm sit um where does Railvolve sit in terms of helping agents not only get the most out of ai but get the most out of their tech in general when it comes to building your business scaling building your relationships and so you really want to get um you know michael like how 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 are these tools bringing you closer to the customers how are you using ai with Realvolve? and just in case you know i know we probably have a few Realvolve users on here yep. since this we're with the california association of realtors but Realvolve is a workflow platform. It's built specifically for realtors. It's purpose designed to take care of the busy work, right? It's it's all these complex automations that you can very easily build and create. It will remind you, it will ask you, hey, did you do this today? Hey, you have that thing due. Did you remember? Did you get the signature? You can have it set up to stay on top of you um, and make sure nothing falls through the cracks. That's what Realvolve is designed to do for real estate agents. So um, kind of seeing this, you know, Michael, what's your opinion of using this and mark i want you to hop in here as well using this with a crm what's been your experience how's it going for you so far in, in that respect uh, yeah so when this first came out and probably the beginning of january when i was convinced that this was the 1995 version of the internet right like we all remember that early days on and now we look at our lives and we can't imagine our lives even those people that says i won't participate in the internet it it's a fundamental part of your day I remember reaching out to uh, to Dave, who's who uh, is one of the or the owner at uh, Realvolve, and I said right away, I said, "You're the winner. You're the winner in this AI platform." And what I mean by that is, a lot of people don't know the what. If they knew the what, they would execute more, right? Realvolve is the how. DocuSign is the how. Uh, BombBomb is the how, but it's not the what. The what is. I know how to get the information to my clients in a, in a meaningful way at the right time, but what am I sending them? What value am I adding to them? And, and, and so, so now we don't have that issue. You can say, act like a nervous first time home buyer, like Mark said, what are the things that most concern you about being a nervous first time home buyer? It will list all those things. And I, then I say, great, now act as a copywriter and write me five emails that will go out once a week that will address and minimize the concerns of a first time home buyer. And it will write that content for you. That's the what. Now the how is to put those into a workflow into Realvolve. So every single time you meet a nervous first time home buyer, you press start workflow and it takes care of that relationship. Realvolve does a great job of seeding you with a lot of great templates, but those templates are templated. They're meant to be vanilla enough for every single real estate agent that it sort of speaks sort of for everybody. Go in and grab each one of your templates and say, write it like David Allen. Write it like this and just have it rewrite, rewrite your all your little emails, improve all those little emails, make them conversational. Um, at the last second, when you're when you're sending something out, you you can alter it because you know the person's personality. So every day. Our assistant, when I walk into the office, hands me my handwritten cards for our birthdays and our anniversaries that are that are that are notified by Realvolve. Realvolve says, "Our assistant, write these cards for these birthdays," and she writes in the top of the corner, "It's you know 35th birthday or it's a 10 year anniversary." I get a response from those cards that I write every time I make that card personable. If I just write, hey, it's your birthday, want to take a moment to wish you hope and birthday, all the best of the year to come, I don't get a response. I'm sure it has impact. But when I read a card that says, I want to, oh, oh, by the way, I bumped into your son the other day. What a great kid. I uh, want to take a moment to, to wish you a happy birthday. Hmm. The email will come back or a Facebook message will come back and say, you know, thanks so much. It was great to hear from you. The moment you can make it special, that less little twist at the end that makes it special is is what you can do and you can do that with ai you can you can at the last second say write a funny poem about mark who was my you know my po my poker buddy and i'll write a three little four little word limerick and if it's not perfect you can change it but you have the ability now to put these little touches to put these little seasonings on these 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 opportunities that take seconds to 
have such a huge payoff. And that's that 40% increase. That's taking it to the next level. So you're never in the what problem now. You could say, give me five emails that I can send to past clients that I've done a crappy job maintaining relationships for. Or can you write me three or five text messages that I could send to agents that are to clients that have done a bad job maintaining a relationship for, and then tweak it, but it'll get you 80% of the way there. I'm not saying yeah. uh, set it, forget it. I'm saying, let that get you 80% there. So the how is real vault. The what is AI. And it's always been an issue with real estate agents just to cr have the creativity of doing that. The, the mental, the mental, process it takes to do that and that has been taken totally away you, yeah. you no longer have that as an issue yeah and and and, and to, to to that point so i've got a podcast and and it's called the, the the real estate coffee house and every single episode it has a pun about coffee and the topic we're talking about to come up with those puns like we did one we, we did one on negotiations and, and and the title was fair trade negotiations it's a great pun it's perfect it's coffee yeah. it's whatnot but it takes me a while I can say to AI, write me a pun about coffee and this title, and they'll give me 10 options. And I'll go, that one's good enough. Like the weight of having that creativity come off the, the, the consumer of my podcast doesn't care that I toiled over the pun for an hour and a half, you know, while I was trying to pretend I was having a glass of wine with my wife, but I was in my head thinking about it. It just gives you 10 options and you say, great, I'll take that one. Like it's and amazing. Like, generate again. <laughs> Gen yeah. Give me 10 more. Give me 10 more. That freedom of making the decision but not the, the the options it creates the options you just make the decision it's a magical thing it, and if i can give everyone you know in, in my time working with michael and, and hearing what mark is excited about on this and, and being at real evolve for the time i've been at real evolve the difference guys is what your mindset is towards these technologies. And before Michael came to find out this AI stuff, he had systems in his business. He knew exactly what emails his past clients were gonna get for the next several years. His transaction workflow process was all lined out. It was all polished to a T. There was reminders that there were things based on deadline dates. There were, you know, hey, send this out three days before closing, three days after closing. You know, it, it's essentially a task list on steroids, specifically for real estate agents, right? So Michael brought this mindset of, you know, I need to have all of this lined up. I need to provide this consistent experience. I have this box. I have these train tracks. This is what my business is running on. And then in comes AI and it's because he has that mindset because he's building his business in this way. It's, well, it's, it's so just to kind of, you know, if there's anything I would encourage anyone to do, it's, it's, you know, think like a business owner, take away this mindset of, I need to build out a sustainable business. Right. And when you, AI, AI is not going to change your business. It's not going to revolutionize your relationship with your clients. It's just there. It's just a tool. But with your mindset shifts from, you know, I, I need to follow the next shiny thing or I need to do this or so-and-so says I need to do this. So I'm going to do that too. I'm going to build a sustainable business because I'm an entrepreneur. That's when these tools become, you know, real evolve is not going to solve your problems. AI is not going to solve your problems, but what will is that mindset shift from being in reaction mode to proactively building systems in your business. I, I couldn't agree more. I think, I think the thing about it is, you know, it, it's chat GPT is a multiplier. Right. So if, 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 if you are a two at taking care of your past clients, if you're a two, then using AI will get you to a four, but we're, we're a 9.6. Our team's a 9.6, right? Mm -hmm. So chat GPT has made us, what was it? Nine? A, a 19.2. You know what I mean? Like it's a multiplier. So you're a four. I'm a 19.2. We both doubled yeah. how good we are at taking care of our clients. I've doubled how productive I am when creating new ideas. I've doubled my creative, like I've doubled me. And so you still have to have the foundation of being an awesome agent and doing the right things. It's a multiplier. And so you still have to have something to multiply because zero times two is, right? And so yep. you you have to have that that mindset of, uh, of let me, let me 
you know, explode something or magnify something. Uh, and, 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 and that's what it's about. So yeah, guys, big takeaways, go out there, start using this play with it. All right. This does. And, and, you know, if you guys want to see videos, we have tutorials on how this works all within the real Evolve CRM, but you know, all of this can be used. You have this library, right? RealVolve has these workflows. It's this library of not just email templates, but workflow templates. So you can take not just an email, but a system and say, hey, I want that system. And then you can start editing it, creating it yourself. Um, it's, it's, Chat it's, GPT, it's, yeah. I, by the way, I don't get paid anything. I don't have an affiliate link with with, with, <laughs> with, with, with Real Evolve. If you guys all sign up for it, it doesn't affect me in any way because I always wanted that that way. No, no matter what company I love, and I love on this company because the product is ridiculous and the uh, humans are amazing. But like, it's so magical. Like to have that little button right there is so magical. It's 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 insane. I mean, it's yeah. it's. From, from something that I already, once again, I already loved Realvolve and now it's a multiplier, right? Once again, it's a multiplier. Yep. Um, so yeah, you know, just my recommendation to everyone, that mindset shift, play with AI, and then get yourself a CRM that can actually take a lot of that busy work off your plate. And that's what Realvolve does. Um, so as far as, you know, we always like to just do little extras, bonuses. Of course, everyone, we are sending out um, the recording sending out everyone was bombarding me with a request for that video series we did so sending that to everybody um guys if you need a better crm if your crm is not set up um if you're curious right go to realvolve.com forward slash car right we have special we have free workflows for memorial day weekend that we're still running um we've got this hundred so five months of chat gpt plus if you if you sign up for real Evolve, Super awesome deal there. We want you guys in there using these workflows and we want you to use AI because we want you to save as much time as possible and grow your businesses as big as you could possibly imagine. Um, so we will get to Q&A here. I know we kind of oh, said- Oh, so you know, excited. I'm starting, I'm starting yes. to read the Q&As. Yeah, to read the yeah Q so we're going to get to Q&A. This is like, I guess the official end, right? But we're I, I'm, I don't have anywhere to go. We'll hang on here for as long as anyone that wants to you know, pop in and we'll discuss AI. Um, First, Michael, how can anyone get a hold of you? I'll put this in the chat as well. If, if people want to ask Hunt me about down on email. Facebook Messenger. Okay. Hunt me down Facebook on Facebook Messenger. Messenger. Uh, send me a message. Uh, I will likely more than anything, send you an audio reply. <laughs> I am not yes. great with a written word. Uh, so I'll probably send you a message, whatever you need from me. I am more than happy to help. I, I love giving back to this industry that has been ridiculous to me and my family. Um, so uh, if you want to reach out and 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 you take the effort to, to ask me, I will help you in any way I possibly can. Uh, I do run a very busy team. I do spend a ton of time with my family. So I'm pretty good at getting back, but um, be patient with me, but I will respond to your questions. Um, polls, I forgot to ask. So yes, I'm launching a poll right now. Um, want your feedback on, first of all, how was this? Are you more likely to use AI now? Was this helpful? If it wasn't helpful, throw it in the chat. We won't be offended, uh, mostly. At least at least Michael won't. I might be a little offended. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but what one other thing I'm doing is we've had so many... Uh, webinars and I've, I've, we've been talking a lot with people i've been talking with mark as well here at real evolve and what we've done is like what we what i'm constantly seeing is like prompts and guides and how to's and videos and so what i wanted to do is just really kind of bring this together for everybody that wants it um you know this is not something we're going to be putting out there for everybody but if you want that guide right then let me know. I'll include you on the list. Just answering yes will just put you on the list as far as, hey, do I, do you want to see something a little bit more comprehensive? Um, it's not finished yet. I'm still building it, but it'll probably be done by next week, um, all things aside. So, um, and then, yes, if you want to hear about Railvolve, right, just if you want to see about those car promos, um, you know, yes or no, it's totally fine. We don't want to bug you guys. We've had a, had a lot of people on here today, so I definitely appreciate that. And Again, you're not alone, right? We, we, there, everyone here at Realvolve has been through this with so many different agents in terms of, man, I got to get my systems in line. I need to be able to scale. I'm in reaction mode. I can't sleep because I keep forgetting stuff or I'm working too many deals at once. Um, that's what we're here for, guys. And we're always doing webinars like this. We absolutely love uh, working with people like Michael who are just love giving back, which, which I love as well. So 
glad everyone enjoyed it. I love seeing everyone thought this was super helpful, except for there's one person. I don't know who you are, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but definitely give us feedback. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not invited to the next webinar. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> so, all right, Q and A. I've talked for long enough, guys. Uh, Realvolve.com forward slash car for the for the promos. Got free workflows. Um, good stuff for all of our California agents. Uh, someone was asking Q &A. about my my Facebook Messenger. Um, just uh, I'll, I'll try to hopefully you'll be able to see this. That's the photo oh, that will be on my Facebook Messenger. That that pretty shaven you young man. There you go. That's who will be there. All right. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Q and A. Get your questions in, guys. We'll hang back for a few more minutes. Okay. Can, can, can I can I totally can I start running through some of these these questions? Absolutely, man. Sam, take and run with it. Is Absolutely. This, is it is this being recorded? Yes. How, yes. how much uh, yes. chat GPT services cost? AI, uh, twenty dollars a month for uh, the plus zero for um, the basic. Can this app help make your website ADA compliant? I, it's, I'm I'm not American. Is that like for disabled? American Disabled Association, and yes. yeah, I, I don't see I don't see why WebPilot couldn't go and figure out what was wrong with it or or help you with that. I don't see why not. How many copyright infringements did the bot just make? I think none, really. I mean, mm -hmm. I, it it's pulling data and then interpreting it. The, um, the generative part of it and transformative part of it is actually yes. what prevents it from being other people's content, unless you specifically ask for "give me this from this website." and and identify it it's creating new content every time if i press generate or regenerate it's creating something brand new that it had never created if i ask something at the same time you ask something mm -hmm. it's going to be two different prompts two different i mean two different results of, of generative uh, if, if you run the same simple one sentence question 20 times it will never be the same right like it, I mean, I mean, I guess monkeys will write infinite typewriters, I guess that sort of thing. Um, what's the difference between the free version and the paid version? Uh, Chat GPT-4 right now and, and plugins, that's the main difference. Oh, and you always have access to it. I don't know if that's still a problem because I've been on the paid version for so long that I don't um, have a problem getting on. Uh, how do you make the AI sound like you? Is it just the way you prompt it? We've sort of covered that. Someone just asked, why do we keep mentioning David Allen? Uh, the reason why is because that's who the, the chat GPT said I write most like. So you won't use David Allen because then you'll be writing like me. You'll use whoever um, Stephen you'll King. be using. Does chat GPT guarantee it will not get hacked? Uh, no, I don't know. It can ever make that thing. I, I what think is Michael's email address? Uh, you I think your information maybe. And you definitely do not want to put any of your personal information in any prompt. You know, no. No. Numbers, stuff no, like that. Samsung, no, Samsung that. learned that lesson. <laughs> Samsung got in a whole lot of trouble because uh, it's using your conversations to get smarter. Now you can now opt out of that um, in your in your details. You can opt out of it, but then I would never give it any personal information anyway. So don't upload your contracts or anything like in it. Um, I wouldn't do that. Uh, so one of these providers providing capture your and stored your data from your computer. Yeah, well, I guess it's different generations. I am not concerned about privacy on the internet. That ship has sailed. Like I, I'm not sharing anything with anybody that I would. It's that ship has sailed. You know where I live. You know my buying habits. You're not getting my social insurance number. Privacy is in my privacy is has sailed. Uh, can you input verbally? Absolutely, you can. Can you can have type to text or talk to text? But uh, multimodal is coming. You're going to be able to put a song in and get a video out. You're going to be able to put words in and get a song out. You're going to be able to talk. That's all happening. Um, uh, is there any class on how to learn? And keep asking me questions. How do you copy in ChatGPT? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so in ChatGPT. Um, in the very top corner, there is this little copy button. And so when you want to copy it, you just press copy and then you can copy and paste it anywhere you want. Um, formatting sometimes can be an issue. Just formatting is ugly, but you get the content. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, what saves you the most time using chat GPT? I think creativity, Mark, I think that's for me what it is like being creative is, um, uh, is Realvolve different than Lion Desk? 
I, I looked at Lion Desk. I don't know the in, the differences, but I, 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 so just so you know how I got my relationship with Realvolve, um, we had a, we didn't love our CRM. We didn't love our CRM. And we spent six months without a CRM, which was tough. And we put every CRM to the test. I sat down with client or user after user after user of all these different platforms and asked a million different questions. The amazing part about Realvolve is it will be whatever you want it to be. And so unlike some other CRMs, it says you have to run your, your business like 75% this way, and then you get 25% yourself. The way we run our CRM, the, our Realvolve is not the way your Realvolve would look like. I'd be shocked if anyone said, yeah, that's the way I want my workflows to be. Um, it's ridiculous. It's the best thing. Is Realvolve free? Um, yes, it. Yes, it is because it will make you 80 times more money than you ever spend on it. So actually... It's, Realvolve pays you to be a client. Um, what are your favorite plugins for real estate? I, internet access is great. Um, they're so new. It's so new. Mark, do you have a favorite? Wolfram is kind of neat because it's all that great data, but do you have a, a favorite one yet? Not yet. I mean, all of them do different things depending on what your need is. And we yeah. are uh, unofficially, this is not from anybody. I am in the middle of creating some plugins for Realvolve. And yeah. Think about, you know, the, the possibilities of what you might do, um, you know, as far as doing searches and stuff like that and say, you know, give me, give me information about David Allen that's in my Realvolve database. What's his birthday, you know, and mm. you turn some yep. of that down stuff. But yeah, not man, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Um, what is the best way to ask to figure out your own voice? Who do you sound like? Uh, anonymous attendee, you can reach out to me. There's a couple of ways you can say, Hey, here's some of my text. Tell me, tell, tell me the voice tone and style. Those are the probably the three keywords, voice, voice tone and style of this writing. Describe it to me the way I did it. And I prefer now is to say, Please ask me 20 questions about my writing style. And at the end, use those 20 answers to give me three writers that, that write most closely in my voice. Uh, and then it will suggest, and that's where I got the name David Allen, who I've never heard of before. Um, how long have we been using ChatGPT? December 17th, 2022. Uh, yeah, we, how, well, this is a great question um, from Alexander. What do you think the learning curve is? I think just this conversation, if I had someone to talk like this in December, I would have cut probably about two months off of my learning curve because it was so new. There was no one saying this is you, you have to tell the prompt to act like a copywriter. I was just I was just saying, write me a listing description just to see what it came out with. I wasn't saying you are a professional copywriter. You have a, a knowledge in the real estate industry. You write compelling listing descriptions in this voice. I didn't understand that prop thing and no one did at the beginning. And there's no such thing as a chat GPT expert. It doesn't exist because it's too new. Um, but I think just today, if I had taken this chat with Mark, Sam and myself, I would have cut two months off of learning it and now there's you know you can go youtube videos and whatnot out there yeah i mean you can you can create so much from the prompt it's asking the right question mm -hmm. you know uh say your purpose is to create a highly effective prompt for your needs you will ask me my prompt to analyze and wait for a response once i provide you the response analyze make it clear make it more concise and uh, ask any relevant questions. And then based on the answers I provide, rewrite my prompts. So you can have ChatGPT write your prompts for you. Absolutely. And yeah. they'll be so much better. Yeah. Um, how can you, uh, you don't have Facebook. Uh, how can you find me? I'm not on Instagram. I'm not on Instagram. We are as a company, but or as a brand. Um, you can go to TMB. Uh, and it's on the wall there, tmbrealestate.com, and you'll find my email address there. Uh, can ChatGBT uh, create and insert graphs? Yes, there's really great visuals now coming, but there's a plugin called uh, gra Graph something. Uh, and so you can give it some, some content, and it will write you a graph almost like a... That's the one plugin that I think might marry really, really well with Realvolve is that you can say, okay, 
give me all the breaking points of this potential thing and it will create graphs for you. Um, but multimodal is where we are now. What that means is chat GPT was text in and text out. Um, so if you could ask it via text and it could respond via text, it's fine. But now with multimodal coming or here, you can give it an image and it will give you text. You can write a text, it will give you image. You can send it a graph, like you saw me give it a PDF. Um, it, that's where we are now with that sort of stuff. So um, having those graphs in there, Wolfram, Wolfram, you could say, great, um, give me a diagram of the average per precipitation in Santa Monica that I can put on my, my blog post or my website and it will create a graph for you and you can use that. So yes, it can create graphs for you now. Um, once again, with plugins, ChatGPT4. Um, that's the Q. Those are the questions that were in the Q and A. Oh, there, is there more? Oh, there are more. Oh, here's one. I just used uh, sign up for ChatGPT Plus, and I don't see a place for the plugins. Not sure why. Absolutely. So you might be new. Good question uh, from um, Bardia. Uh, so when you go into ChatGPT, you're going to come down here to your profile. Here you can see it says Michael Thorne. Uh, I'm going to click on those squares and you're going to come into settings and in settings, you're going to have general beta features and data control data control is where you can say that you don't want to have your chat history and training uh, used. Um, I want to have my chat history on there. It's funny how they, 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 they catch you. It's not one or the other. It's both. Um, but if you come into beta features here, you can turn on, I don't have one of the features yet, which is the code interpreter. I don't know if it's because I'm Canadian. I don't know if Mark has it yet, but this is where you can turn on your plugins here. Um, I was on a waiting list for a long, long time to get it, but I believe now when you sign up, you're probably gonna get it. But if your chat GPT looks like this at the top, if it looks like this and it looks like this with these, not with the drop downs, but this is new, this little section here with this lightning bolt, if it looks like this, you have plugins. So there you go. Got that question done. Yeah. Any other questions? We still have a lot of people still on here. Uh, what is the name of the other AI? Bing? Yes, Bing. Okay. And someone asked about who owns uh, ChatGPT. ChatGPT AI. is a $10 billion uh, in, uh, company um, owned by OpenAI. And uh, Microsoft made a, I think, 40 five percent investment 48 percent everything but controlling it, investment into it and so i you know they are co-owners uh between open ai and microsoft which is bing when you young when you use bing you're actually using chat gpt4 if you're using it on creative mode you're using chat gpt4 um and then there's bard which is the the microsoft version of it too as well there's a bunch of other ones um harpa ai is is an amazing Hard plug into um, Harpa is amazing, a plugin for uh, Chrome, which will let you interact with websites live. Like if I come here and I, uh, this is our team, I can open up here. This is Harpa AI. And I can just say some rise. I don't know if that, and then I can just say page I, just by doing this page. I don't see and it will, oh, sorry, see my screen. You're right, there you go. Um, I just come down to Harper AI right here. Uh, I just opened it, it's a Chrome extension and I just say summarize and then I say page and I can just click on there and it will read the entire page. The Thorne Maisie Bongers real estate group consists of a dynamic team, Michael Thorne, Jordan Maisie, Trisha Bongers, Brandon Juker and Jody Lawrence. See, it just summarized that page right now. Uh, and I can do uh, I can do amazing stuff here. I can come here and press slash and say, I want you to write a outline based on this information on this page. And I just go page like that. This is a free extension. And it will write an article outline based on our team. The chapters, Michael. I'm a compassionate leader. Um, so that's good. Meet Jorda. There you go. So that's, it's, it's, it's amazing how now these AIs can interact with the internet. It can, it can tell you like, here's my blog posts, read all my blog posts. Tell me which four next blog posts I should be writing. It's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Here's, here'd be an example of how we utilize it within real itself. 
And this is just an example. I have got a negative message and this is just an SMS message, but you know, I don't know why anyone would do this, but uh, he did the inspectors, uh, you know, it's total disaster. I mean, it's a very negative message. So you go in here, you click on open AI and you could even say something like, uh, what is the sentiment of the message? And because I have this checked, it automatically knows that yeah. it's checking that. But what it does then is it goes out and says, okay, what, you know, what is the sentiment of that? So um, it basically says, yeah, I regret to inform, oh, actually it rewrote it uh, with a positive sentiment or, um, you know, you can give it a prompt, go in there, rewrite this message to make it positive. Um, and include the greeting and signature. So it, it builds in the merge fields for you automatically. So, you know, there's just a lot of capability to create, recreate, improve your existing content without having to use brain power to do it. You know, and one, and one, of, the, one of the interesting examples of it is, you know, this, it, it, you know, one of the things I learned really, really young as an agent was to mirror you know, the intensity of the person I'm speaking with. If, if there, if it's a mm. sweet elderly lady, I will, I don't, I don't talk like this. Like I normally do. Right. Like I would, I'm me because I don't care who you are. I just mean that, but like I'm, I'm being me because that's authentic, but I, I will mirror the person I'm speaking with. And if I know I'm going into a lit, CMA evaluation with a super analytical data driven client, I will present the pricing and the analytics in a very data-driven manner, uh, because that's what that consumer is going to to grasp onto or or make them help them understand. And so things like in Realvolve, when when you are just about to send out an email that happens to be a template email, and you know that your client is a very you know emotional, feely, touchy person. You, you can at the last second, can you make this email a little bit more fun or a little bit more laid back or a little bit more feely or on the opposite side, mm. can you make this more data driven? Can you make it more analytical? In fact, ChatGPT know, knows the difference between type A, type B, type C, type D personality. I don't know if it knows all the colors, but if you say, can you rewrite this email for a type D personality at the last second it will? And I don't think that's being disingenuous. I think that's great customer service. You're still yeah. providing the exact same information, but just in the way that that person can receive it. I think that's great customer service. So at the last second the goes out though. Yeah. Oh, of course you should read it. Okay. I, I, there's, there is nothing. The most magical thing in, in real Volve is manual with preview. I mean, nothing goes out without manual preview because it gives you two things. It allows you at the last second to add a little anecdote or a sentence that makes it personable and connects with them but it gives you one last second to use chat GPT and to make sure that it's appropriate because things happen in life. You may have just found out that something went wrong in the person's life or something tragic just happened or whatever right. it is. You, you can't have these fun messages going out. You should, to me, you all, I, manual preview is my bread and butter because it lets, it lets me be me at the very last second. And I think that's super important. That's that's also built into Realvolve as a whole. You can set that's what it up I mean. to- yeah, yeah. It, it, it will ask you, you know, and one of the things we hear from agents, it's like, oh, it sends out the email. It's so annoying. It's embarrassing sometimes because it wasn't at the right time. It wasn't at the right moment. It was, it was, you know, you just got off the phone with them and then your CRM sends them an email like, nice to meet yeah. you. You know, and it's just like, yeah. oh, it's so cringy. But the way real Volvo is set up is that it's heavy automation that does not exclude you. So instead of just firing things left and right, which I think is the result of marketers creating <laughs> marketers creating CRMs and tech people creating CRMs and not relationship driven business people creating CRMs. But it will ask you, hey, here's your emails today. You want to send this? You know, like do you you want to send this out, right? Like, and so instead of things just going out, which you can still do that, you can still send auto emails out, but you know, it's set up to in the you get there in the morning, you spend 15 minutes in your CRM. Yep. Send that. Yep. Oh, edit that. Or, Hey, include the, this proper description or include yeah. a breakdown of their entire transaction. Check that box. Here's the update on your transaction so far. It's Sam's too cool. young to get sort of this reference, but it always real reminds me a little bit of like that eighties, like, like tower 
pen, like beautiful uh, business guy that sits behind a big desk in a big room with like scotch on the back wall. And every three minutes, an assistant comes in and hands a paper and says, can you approve this? Can you sign this? Can you sign off on this? You can review this. And then they go and work. And that's how I think about real like ball. Mad it's, it's me. Yeah, exactly. It's me <laughs> sitting at my desk. And at the last second, someone says, hey, I'm about to just send this, this thing off to Betty. Can you sign off on it? I look at it and I go, approved. And it goes out and the next person comes in and says, and I go, approved. And I go, change this and then send that out. Like that's how I think Realvolve is I just sit yeah. there and things magically just show up during the day where I just go, approved. And it goes out <laughs> and it just makes me feel that way. Makes you feel like a boss. Yeah, it's, <laughs> exactly. I actually have this idea, Michael. I'll have to show you this uh, of like this sort of just like a TikTok like series of what it would be like if Realvolve was a person, you know, and just sort of- yes. You know what I mean? Because it really is. Yeah. And I, we've actually had clients describe it like it's a mini me. Like it's just, you know, it's like having a little person that just tells me, hey, do you want to do this today? So um, we've gone over. I love it, though. I'm so happy. I, so many of you are still hanging on, which which is awesome. Um, I think we got all the Q&As. Did we miss anything, Michael, Mark? Did we get all those? No, I, I just realized that my phone isn't in the studio. And so I'm imagining I'm going to walk out of here. I'm going to turn off the lights here in the studio and I'm going to have about 57 Facebook Messenger messages. But <laughs> right now I don't hear it going off. So right now I'm okay with it. And, and the AI version of Michael will respond in time. Uh, to everybody. Um, so everyone, thanks for, thanks for joining us today. Yes, we'll get the recording. Um, we will get uh, those resources out to everyone that wanted them. Reach out to Michael on Facebook for those prompts. And... Get real evolved, guys. Um, sign up for real evolve. We'll help you. We'll walk you through it. Uh, we'll get you all the best deals. Um, Michael, Mark, thanks for being here, guys. I had a blast, and we'll do this again sometime. Anytime. I, I first of all, you you guys are remarkable human beings at that company, but it's it's fun chatting about this. As you can tell, it makes me pretty fired up and excited at the opportunities that exist out there. Thanks, man. Thanks, Michael. Appreciate thanks, it, guys. Mark. Thank you all for thanks coming. Thanks everybody for joining. Take care. Peace.